Hello, this is Gina, Lead Youth Counselor for Girls Inc. at YWCA Minneapolis. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm really excited to welcome you all to our next installment of Women of the Week. This week's woman is Hannah. Um, I'm going to pass it over to her to introduce herself. Hannah, if you can say your name, pronouns, and a fun fact about yourself so we can get to know you a little better, please. Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, my name is Hannah. Uh, her, she uh, are fine pronouns. Um, and my fun fact is I've got two of the cutest cats ever, and I'll go grab one of them. And that's my, that's my fun fact, really embracing the crazy cat woman uh, quarantine vibe. I'm really glad to have you here. Um, if you could share with us a little bit about your career pathway, some highlights and things that you have experienced up until now, we would love to hear it. I went to college at South Dakota School of Mines and Technology in Rapid City, and I uh, majored in geological engineering, and I'm now working as a geotechnical engineer um, for a smaller uh, private testing company. Um, and then that all started when in high school, um, you know, there's a lot of pressure to pick your major, um, what college to go to, or what um, post-secondary education you should do. Um, and when I was in high school, I just really liked being outside, hunting, fishing, going to the lake, um, activities like that. And classes I really liked, um, I liked all of my science classes I took. And then I was good at math. I wouldn't say math was one of my favorite classes, but I could get through it all right. Um, and I wasn't huge into English, so I just thought that it made sense to do a more um, science and engineering related major. Um, and then another big deciding factor for me was you always hear about people, they go to college for four years and then they get a degree where it's really hard to find a job. For me, it was important that I wanted to spend four years um, working towards something where once I graduate, I would be able to have a job um, that I could find fairly easily and a job that paid fairly well. Um, so that's how I decided on engineering. I picked that school um, because I really liked the location in the Black Hills. Um, it's really easy to study geology when you're there with so much geology and you can go out, do all sorts of field work um, and really get that hands-on experience. And I also had some really good professors that really kind of sold the major to me. And when I was in college, I ended up doing an internship with the South Dakota Department of Transportation. And that was one of my favorite jobs that I've ever had. I was a geotechnical engineer intern, and I mostly worked on slope stability. Um, so whenever there was a landslide, uh, me and one of the engineers, we would go out, um, analyze it, um, try to figure out what happened, like what caused the landslide, and several different things can cause landslides, um, such as rainfall, snow melt, changing in water levels, erosion, um, disturbances by human activity. Um, so we would go out, try to determine what caused the landslide, and then we would need to try to figure out how to fix it. Um, so in order to do that, we would have a survey team go out and survey the landslide. So we would have proper measurements for our calculations. Um, and then we would have a drill crew come in and then drill a soil boring at the top of the slope. So then we knew what type of soils we were working with um, or rock um, because different rocks and soils have different strength uh, parameters that we would then need for our calculations. And then we would enter all of this into a computer program it would run um, a bunch of different calculations for us and then we would try to do um, we would try to uh, play with the parameters a little bit like either flatten out the slope or like remove the unstable layer to figure out uh, what's the best way to rebuild the slope so it won't happen again um, and then after the slope has been rebuilt depending on the location we would install a um, inclinometer to make sure that the slope stayed stayed stable and then an order to, or an inclinometer is basically a PVC pipe that's drilled into the ground. And then once a year, we would come back with um, this probe that we would drop down the PVC pipe to kind of measure any movements um, of the slope. So then that would alert us if 
there's an increase in movement um, or uh, if it's going to fail again, so then we can take proper uh, precautions to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, and then that was my internship at the DOT in South Dakota. And then right now, I am working for a company called Chosen Valley Testing. I'm a geotechnical engineer there. And it's a smaller company, so I hold um, a lot more responsibilities. Um, and I do a bunch of different things. Um, we cover geotechnical engineering, um, construction materials testing, and environmental testing. Uh, oh, and I should probably explain what a geotechnical engineer is, because um, I'm sure not a lot of people really know what that is. Um, so basically, if you want to build any type of building, like a house, um, hospital, anything, you're going to want to know what the soils are like um, beneath the building, because not all soils are stable. So I would come in, and then I would analyze the soil, make sure that it is stable, and if it's not, what needs to be done in order to make um, the ground suitable for a building. Um, so kind of think of like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Like the structure itself was built very well because the structure didn't collapse, but the entire thing is leaning. So that would be a geotechnical um, issue. So if someone does want to build a site, we would send out our drill crew where they would drill some soil borings within the building area, and then they would bring those samples back to me so I can analyze them, um, determine the strengths of the soils, um, and then I need to determine how heavy the building is um, and then what weight the soils can handle um, and if anything needs to be removed um, or added to below the building um, or the foundation um, so it won't lean or collapse. And then once the geotechnical exploration, like before uh, construction is done, then I would then do construction materials testing um, once the project actually goes to construction. So I would then go back out when they're excavating uh, to look at the soils that are there to make sure that it matches what was in my report. Um, and then I make sure that they follow everything that I say in my report. And then I would also inspect rebar and then concrete for the building foundation. Can you talk a little bit more about um, what it's like to be a female leader in those spaces? So I'm going to be honest, like everything, there are good days and there are bad days. Um, I definitely wish there were more women in my field. Um, I am personally a girl's girl, so I like being around uh, women. But honestly, most of the time I am treated like an equal. Um, there are those occasions where I do need to pull out the fact if I show up to a construction site that I am an engineer. I have been doing this for so many years, like this is not my first rodeo. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and then you have those times where you can say all that stuff and it just doesn't really matter. Um, like this past week, I was at a job site and I realized that they were pouring the wrong concrete for a garage slab. And I told them, I'm like, look, according to the plans, like this isn't correct. This isn't going to be strong enough. Um, I think you have a real issue here. And he didn't really take me seriously, kind of disregarded me, kind of made kind of talked down to me a little bit. And I'm like, all right, like, you don't have to take my recommendation, but I'm going to put this in my report. And then when the structural engineer sees it, you're going to have to deal with that. Not my issue. So I did all of that, followed all of the steps that I should. And then when the structural engineer saw it, um, I think he's going to make the concrete guys tear out everything that they've done and then redo it um, because the concrete's just not strong enough to um, hold the weight. So, um, yeah, I mean, it like, it sucks sometimes that you're not taken seriously, but you do the best that you can, and that's good enough. What are other skills at the beginning of your career that you had to practice in order to hold your own and feel more confident in your current role? I found that when I went out to job sites, that it was always really important before I went um, to look up everything that I could find out about the project. If there's a geotechnical report written on it, what's written in the plans, um, 
And then if it's a project that's been going on for a while, I would see who else from my company has been at that project. Um, and then I'd go talk to them um, to see what's been going on at that project. And then I know when I show up, I know exactly what I need to do um, and what needs to be done. Um, if you show up and you know exactly what needs to be done, then you will be taken more seriously. It's easy for me sometimes because I've got numbers to back up exactly what I'm gonna say. So if someone wants to dispute me, like saying that the concrete that they're pouring is good enough, I have plans and numbers written like in front of me saying, no, it's not. Um, so it is really nice that I do have numbers to back up everything that I am saying. Um, and at the end of the day, like you're gonna have people who aren't exactly the nicest to you and you just gotta let it roll off your back. Um, and I will say there are far more good days than there are bad days. Um, and then I also find that it's really helpful that I have a really close group of female friends. And then I do have other uh, friends who are females who also work in male dominated fields. Um, so it's nice that they know what you're going through and you can kind of talk it out with them. And then it just feels better at the end of the day. Um, what are some skills that you practice now um, in your everyday work? I practice communication uh, a lot. Uh, communication is really key. Um, letting my clients know exactly where I am in a project um, and then giving them deadlines and then sticking to those deadlines uh, for when they're going to get reports. Um, and then also when I write reports, I need to be very clear about what was tested, how it was tested, and what the strength parameters or the test results are and have that be as straightforward as possible so there's not a lot of confusion. Um, honestly, good communication is probably the most important thing you can have in any job. Can you share a little bit more about how you are strong, smart, and bold? I really enjoy <laughs> outdoor activities like hiking, snowshoeing, biking, and cross-country skiing. Um, and there isn't always someone to go with me, so even though it is a little intimidating to go out on your own, um, I still do it because I would rather enjoy what I'm doing than sitting at home wishing that I was out snowshoeing or hiking. Um, but when I do that, I make sure that I always share my location with my cell phone with someone else. So they know exactly what trails I'm going to be on um, and then a time frame of when I should be back. Um, so I'm staying smart. Um, by telling someone when I'm going to be back, strong by going out on my own. Um, and then again, I also think it is really important to have like a good um, close group of friends to support you. Construction is considered an essential activity. Um, and you are outside, you're social distancing. Um, and then even in the office, we're all wearing masks now, um, trying to stay six feet away from each other. Um, it's made things a little different and a little unsure, but for the most part, um, my day has stayed the same. Um, my favorite part would be doing field work. I just really like to get out of the office. Um, I think it makes my day go by a lot faster. Um, I'm interacting with different people. Um, and then I just like feel good after putting in a good hard day's work. That's a really good question. Um, in five years to not, from now, I would like to have my own professional engineering license. So then that means I can sign off on plans, I can sign off on reports. Um, my word would then be the final say on all these projects. Um, and that's a test that I need to pass. You need, in order to be a PE, you need to study four years under another professional engineer, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, and then I would like to take on some more difficult projects as well.